Shishi and Francesca. You want to tell us what you're... Uh, oh, there's no microphone, so I'll just say it. <laughs> Prakmahanov Suite Number 1, um, Movement 1, Barker Roll.
quite a few, you guys. <laughs> Good. Did you hear each other? Yes. Did you hear yourselves? What yeah, did you think of the balance? It's easier for me to hear her than myself to hear. But I think it was, it was just because it's projecting. Mm -hmm. This is also more bright piano, I think. Uh -huh. Okay. There were places where you did really well in keeping it light. So yeah. that was great. There are other places where we can talk about using the pedal changes to uh -huh. help with that. And also maybe for, for your part, to, to sound like a viola, <laughs> <laughs> the melodies uh, can have more core. So we can take a look at that, Masumi. I loved hearing the, the two different pianos, right? It's, it's actually kind of nice to, and it was, it was, it's also really nice to hear two really nice instruments, right? Being played well. Um, yeah, I, I, one, one thing I, I just was just generally wondering was kind of how you hang together. Because um, this is a Barcarolle, right? Which is what? A boat song. A boat song, right? right? So there's like a rocking in the waves and all that, right? Um, and, and how much of that were you trying to, to feel? <laughs> I think we tried at the beginning because there is a melody and then it became more demanding <laughs> from, you know, technical. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wonder if you could fixate a little bit more on, on the kind of like the natural swing, mm -hmm. uh, this kind of groove that's, that's set up and a little bit, like sometimes it, it starts getting into, you know, like a little bit of counting. D did you ever feel that you were counting? Yeah, I see, it, and which is an interesting thing because, and again, this is like in performance, like w how you depart from rehearsal to performance and from practice to performance. But I try to make it a goal to never count in a concert, but to, to have a strong sense of pulse. But if there's a way to, to allow yourselves to start just like trusting your, your internal rhythm, and then you can, maybe, maybe that'll help feel a little bit of the Barcarola. Right. So by pulse, are you also breathing with it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, there's, I, I mean, I, I think that, because that, we were talking about this the other day, right? Like how pianists breathe versus string players, right? What's the difference? I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> I mean, we're not all the same, right? So like not, not every Everybody's string player. Everybody's different. Right, everyone's mm -hmm. different. But because we have a little bit more of a natural sense of like almost exhale on a dambo, <laughs> or like exhale, inhale, mm -hmm. or um, it's in the same way that, that like, you know, a singer has to inhale, we, we do have to pre prepare breath before we start playing, which maybe isn't as commonly inherent in piano playing? Like you don't always breathe into your playing, right? Yes, yes, you do, you guys. <laughs> we work on it, we work on it. <laughs> right, pianists, come on. Actually, I think a lot of pianists don't breathe and it becomes a problem um, because you can't feel the swing if you're not, if you're not relaxed enough um, to feel it. Um, so, but, uh, but I was going to say that, well, first off, that we can simulate the up bow, down bow in terms of inhale, uh, exhale, just as a mental idea. Because um, I, I actually sometimes write up bow, down bow in my score, and it just, it helps me to like have a sense of it. Mm. But also, um, some of, sometimes I don't feel that um, some of the, the upbeats uh, that maybe the size of your breath was full. Um, and I think that, so when you're talking about pulse, um, I think having that pulse also means that the breath is big enough that it carries us to the next pulse. So we can try some of that too. But, um, all right, where would you like them to start? Maybe just at the beginning. Great. Just get like a... Great idea. In another place where, uh, that the, the size of the breath can help with the pulse is the second measure on your long note. So are you aware of how big you want that breath to be? 
All right, so, so let's just feel it out this time and see what you find. Yeah, did you, did you feel the same size of the first versus the second measure? That would be great. What a great idea. <laughs> is your, is your, your sort of like unit of movement, because I, I, like as I'm sitting right behind you, I get a sense of, a little bit of that, like I, I feel that, that clock ticking in that way, but I wonder if you change the moment of the pendulum swing. Um, A second, I want to ask you about the, the core of your sound. I know you're trying to be nice and play softly, but you are the melody. Um, can you can you feel like there's something in each note? Um, maybe a little bit more of a laser focus. Okay. It, just give it a try on your own. Yeah. Not louder, and maybe not so much your left hand, maybe just your right hand, but feel the core. Let's, let's uh, do what Masumi was talking about in terms of taking away that every single beat has to have an impulse and just think of the larger flow of it. More core. Okay. okay, how about a little bit more of the right hand over the left? So less, less on the left hand. Okay, split the difference. Okay, now, what do you think? I, I'm thinking like if I was playing this, you would probably hear through my sound a lot of information. You, you know what I mean? And, and if, I think that would, because you're actually kind of bopping to the beat a little bit, if, try not, because your, your line is so across. Like, you know, it, it's, we, we have a strong groove established, and then, or, or not totally established yet, but there's a, an implication of rocking. And then you're clearly across bar lines, right? The, Like you, you're sort of almost outside of rhythmic rhythm. Does it feel rhythmic or does it feel arrhythmic? Do, do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's like there's the rocking and then you're like gliding through it somehow, right? So, so what if you sort of like physically occupy okay. that a little bit more? But do you feel the, the bum? Mm. Try not to. Do you still feel it? Like I still feel a little bum. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Don't count. That's nice. I think it sounds different. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think it might it might the construction of it might be nice. Mm -hmm. You know, you sort of against each other and you're sort of it's a little hazy still, right? Kind of playing circles around each other, so yeah. Hazy, but with a little bit of core of sound, okay, so okay. that she can play under you. Okay. Yeah, let's try it. And I thought that the, the feeling in the opening, the pendulum was was great. Yeah. yeah. You know what? 
I'm sorry. Can we, do you mind if I just add a, a layer? This is like the backstory, okay? We're, we're gonna add a layer of me counting one time. Okay. And then close your ears, <laughs> and then we'll go back to the pendulum, okay? Ready, go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Thank you, okay. the pedal in this room in this acoustics right now? Well, there's, there's two guesses, <laughs> either too much or too little. <laughs> there's really, yeah, there's really not much, um, there's not much risk in answering a question. Try, <laughs> try changing the pedal and letting it release a little faster so you're hearing bottom, bottom, like just something really light on the water. Maybe the wind is blowing it or something like that. Yeah, just by yourself. Yeah. 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 Yeah, do you hear it, it goes da da clean da da. Yeah. So it's like right now, I think the places that you're changing is a little arbitrary. Yeah, is that fair? Well, I'm trying, I'm trying to do every pair, and then trying if that's too little, then maybe every two. Down, up, down, up, down, up, clear. Okay, now, be a little lazy with that. Da, da, da. Yeah, somewhere in there. Okay, now, the other thing without, uh, with a really nice piano is to have a little highlight on the top, so a little bit, just to have like a little sparkle. Yeah, not, not really loud, yes. And, and certainly not all of them, just I would say, right, I'm taking too much of a chance, it didn't speak, okay. Yes, that's right, yeah, gorgeous. The piano technician at Indiana, he called that the cash register. <laughs> it's like, that's where the pianists make all their money, in the, in the Mozart register. Oh, okay, <laughs> anyway, the cash register. Um, I had um, one question about this opening. Um, is, it, like, is, it, is it clear yet, or is it still a hazy picture, <laughs> musically? How we're supposed to play it? Or what yeah, yeah, what it should be, what it should be. Like, what's. It's, 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 it's on the hazier side, right? Like, it's still emerging. I feel like you're giving me a lot of information. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's information maybe that you're using to, again, to stay together. But it doesn't musically always make sense, right? Because I. Um, you know, and, and even the, it's like the, the energy of, of, of your sound feels a little bit like, like micro. And I think later on in, in the spark roll, it, it develops into that. It get, things get a little bit more active and then it subsides again. I wonder if, you're, if you, you sort of occupy a little bit more of a, of a grand space, grand movement, don't allow yourselves to, you know, to, to tick too much. I mean, just feel, feel the pulse. You know, and it's going to be, it's a strong regular beat, right? And with a little fluctuation if necessary, but, but trust it once. And I don't know if, if, just see where things, how they, how they sort of float, right? Do you ever use uh, imagery? Like imagine you're in a particular space? Space? Yeah. Um, I do in the sense of acoustics, 
So like if I was in this room, sometimes I might think I could change, I could try practicing so that it's hard stone surface or carpet surface or five times the size and I try to alter my sound or try to alter the perception of the room. You can pretend that there's carpeting in here right now. I can, I can yeah. try to, to, to dry funny. out my sound uh -huh. and, 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 and simulate like a carpet, you know. I try to uh -huh. put on filters. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so interesting. So yeah. I, I think my hearing only extends to like what I can really actually hear literally. Like so I couldn't I wouldn't be able to think about doing that. But what I what I would be able to do is imagine let's say I'm in a the Moscow uh, subway station which is very palatial and has very high ceilings. It has incredible pianos. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my imagination that's it does. That's right. Yeah. It does with uh, chandeliers and just like space and no people uh, on a Sunday. There's no people there, just me. <laughs> but like, for instance, like, is there, is there a space that you guys might think about? You don't have to answer right now, but like, is there a space that you guys can think about where you can have that sort of um, energy? And oh, do you think this is outdoors or indoors? Because I think if I'm in a boat, I'm outdoors um, in my <laughs> underground subway palatial place. There's, a, <laughs> there's a, a lake. There's a lake in this cavern. <laughs> no, but, but there is some sort of wind or, or, or breeze in my fictional world um, that, that could be helpful. <laughs> okay, let's try it. was a beautiful opening. Mm -hmm, I Did agree. You, wasn't that just magical? I mean, I, I think that was yeah. really, really great. Yeah. yeah. You took some chances, right? Like it was a little risky, right? And you felt like, eh, but, but you took the chance and it was great. Um, from this spot, like if you go back a page, at, in the neighborhood of 37, you have triple P, right? That's a pretty, do you both have that? Yeah, PPE, PPP, you know, so kind of pianissimo, pianississimo neighborhood, which is a pretty extreme dynamic. And I wonder if you should work harder to make a really extreme dynamic. Do you know what I mean? Like, like really, in the same way that you were taking a chance rhythmically and sound-wise in the opening, try to, try to do something here that's like, because it, it, it could be so, you know, more magical if you, if you really kind of like, yeah, a, a little bit more um, other, right? 
can we do it just one at a time? Shishi, do you want to just try that on that particular piano? So like with the first note, right? Maybe have more of a prep breath so you're like really ready to take a chance. So that was that was a little safe, even less. Wow. I can hear it. Okay, now if you let your right arm feel more weighted, you can actually get softer. That was really clear. Now, can you feel even more weight? It's pretty fun. That's pretty fun. Yeah, your part. Yeah, so, so the, the necessity of like, you know, when, when it's soft, you have to feel your full body weight and be connected with that first. Otherwise, the notes don't speak. So we still want to hear it. But when you practice, can you ghost it and just like not make a sound but feel your full weight in the left hand? Just, just your left hand. So don't, don't let us hear anything, but put your full weight down. Yeah, right. So you're actually conscious of every finger that's playing. Right, now give us a little more sound than that. Ooh. Yeah, you got most of the notes. One more time. More body weight, relax, yeah. Relax your traps. Nice. Mm. Ooh. Together? When, when, just a little thing, when in string playing, when we double and we have octaves, usually like the upper voice almost doesn't play. So like when you're doing your octaves, I wonder if you just, if you weight a voice towards the, the lower octave okay. and, and basically like you can almost not play the, the upper octave. I don't know, maybe it's different in piano. Uh, Wait, well, what about like all the octaves with Brahms, with cello? Yeah, you, you, you almost should, not play? You should just basically, you just add a little color over the top, but you don't want to actually play with core in, in your tone because you don't need it because the chorus, the fundamental is in the bass and you're almost like an overtone at that point, right? So, so you, you want to fit into that series and not create two separate fundamentals, but rather it's a sound. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise, and then intonation sounds better also. But does, is that true for, this, for high register stuff as well? Yeah. So low register and Every high register. Every register, always go with the lower voice. Okay. And lower voice, play with a little bit more tone. Okay, so with piano, I like to practice them only first. Um, and then once that is in place, then sometimes the fifth finger adds some color. Yeah. We only have four fingers. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> One, two, three, four. This one's passive. <laughs> I have ten. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's let's go on. Awesome, you guys. Yeah. Yay! My, I, I just wanted, ear tickling. It was yeah, ear tickling. You totally. Know? Nice. You made us listen. I just want to say, though, when you're not doing octaves and your right hand is, is the melody and is that high, I think you need a lot more body weight. Okay. So can you just uh, 
forget the pianissimo here because everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also, what which note has the most body weight? The first, yeah. The first. So, not so much da ba 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 da. Like, if you had a bow, how would it sound? With a chord. Okay, now the third time you have a color change. And then this time, well, I was thinking less, but you could do more if you want. Well, I was saying, you know, like if you have a chord as a starting point, then you can play around with the colors, right? Because our ears are already tuned in, but if they're all really, really pale, it's hard to have the color changes okay. harmonically. Cool. Um, any last words before we wrap up? No, it sounds great. You yeah, know, I would just say, uh, so the pedaling that we didn't quite get to, I think is around page 20. It's just that when you have a lot of notes and things, it's good to maybe keep, keep your pedaling foot really clean and just um, have every quarter change be clean on this piano in this particular room. Because it may have worked on your other piano, right? But on this piano, it wasn't it wasn't transparent enough for her. And also for, for your part to really feel like it's deep enough to get through. Can we just try the texture of that? Where is that? Um, pick up to 91. <coughs> uh, give her, give, yeah. Precious to me, and this is where I was thinking viola, mm. viola solo. Mm -hmm. I, I just felt like it was maybe a, a little cautious. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, what do you think? In an expressive sense or in a loudness sense? Oh, tonally. Oh. Like sing through your sound a little bit. Would more. you would you play that part with her? Sure. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just the wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, just yeah, just to kind of, I guess, follow through. I, you can't really follow through, but you can think it. Like it's a horizontal sound, right? Yeah, let's try it. That feels vertical. You know what I mean? Like a little bit T. But if, if there's a sense of even sideways movement. Yeah. note and a major chord that was gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. all right thank you everybody for joining us come back tomorrow at one o'clock for the piano intensive master class we have some brilliant performers here uh, who's going to play for you so um, have a wonderful day thank you